Okay, what we have here is a, a trio actually. We have a jerk pork loin, tenderloin wrapped in apple smoked bacon with the sour orange and thyme infused lobster tail stuffed with lion fish muesli, plantain puree, and we have fever grass infused baby vegetables. Chef, speak a little bit to me about this lion fish I heard you mentioned. Lobster we know pretty well, but lionfish, can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yes, lionfish we use basically in um, both sources, uh, starter as well as our entree. It's our feature fish. We know that in the Bahamas and also the Caribbean, in broad ways, we can use it. You know the fillet is very small, so you can't just have it pan seared. So we've made mousseline, we made lionfish cakes, we do lionfish fritters, there's numerous ways you can do it. So that's our feature today. Fantastic. And now this uh, fever grass infused vegetables. Fever grass, I know, is a tea, but you've infused the vegetables with fever grass? Yes, you know, grandma always has fever grass in her backyard. And we grow it grows very, very wild. So we just take some of the fever grass and we boil it and infuse it in the vegetables. It gives it an excellent taste. Fantastic. Thank you for this uh, trio. We look forward to sampling it this evening. And I think you have a few other dishes for us to see. Yes, we'll, we'll be very excited. We have one of our native bread puddings, but it's done in a traditional way. We use a little John Watlin's rum, made some homemade and few. So now John Watlin's is the new uh, distillery in Nassau, is that correct? Yes, and the uh, rum is very, very good. I, I don't drink, but I took a shot of it today. <laughs> Is that the amber rum that you're using, the white rum, or the aged rum? The aged rum. I like good things. <laughs> Fantastic. So that John Watley's rum is aged for five years right in Nassau, and the distillery is just at the top of the hill in the old Buena Vista restaurant. Now the John Watley's distillery. So we look forward to sampling the delicious that they have for us this evening. Getting a little taste of the Bahamas in Manhattan. So from one island flavor to the next. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Good. Marinating some tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are teardrop tomatoes. Very, very sweet. Give me a dessert plate and get all done. It's a native bread pudding. Okay. With John Watlin's marinated fruits. Marinating what? Fruits. Fruits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but what? Berries. We have. Thank you. And the sauce. What do you put on the sauce? Rum. It's rum sauce. What? I mean, thank you. I mean, I like it.
Come on. Can we get a dude? Take a leaf. Take a leaf. And that's ice cream? Yeah. What is the name of the dish again? It's a bread pudding, rum raisin bread pudding with a rum spice ice cream and John Watlin's rum marinated fruit. So it's all rum. Excellent. Thank you. Let's hold it there for a moment so we can get it shot. Okay, come on, Joe, we're right now. The chef. Yeah. It's having fun. I think so. Let me see if I like it. Yes. Can I even kill this? Yeah, can I even kill? Good, I got gotcha. you. What's your name, Chef? My name is Brian Robinson. Okay, are you excited to be here today? Oh, very excited. Very excited. How long does it take the whole preparation for this, for an event like this? For an event like this, it can take an enormous amount of hours. It's the prep that's the most important part. How many hours are we talking about? Well, today it took us, we got here at one, and we haven't stopped yet. Because we know what we're doing, we can do that. Anybody else, you probably have to be here. Earlier than that, or we'll start prepping from the day before. From the day before? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, I'm going to push that five. I get out of here, too. Okay. I don't know if you could introduce us to this kind of place. What is this? This is a lemongrass infused carrots, vegetables. They're very rustic. They give okay. it a rustic look. Um, this is the pork. Tenderloin, check pork tenderloin wrapped in the apple with smoked bacon. Okay. Very delicious. This is the plantain mashed potato. Together? Yes, plantain and mashed potato. Oh, I heard of it, but I've never seen it like so right, formal. It's right here. We have it for you today. You can taste it. Right now, this is our native bread. It's called Johnny Cake. Why is it called Johnny Cake? The, actually, the name was a cake that people used to take on a journey. So it used to be a, basically a journey cake and it turned into Johnny cake. When, when, okay. the, when, the, when the sailors were going away, the fishermen, and they go on for weeks at a time. So is it uh, roast, I mean, what do you call that? Baked, like regular bread, or does it have any technique that we, we don't know about? Yes, it's, it's not a lot of kneading. It's the flour, basically the same ingredients without the yeast, and it's mixed very quickly formed in a pan or in a muffin pan and it's good to bake in a, in a regular oven. And these are? These are native Bahamian spiny lobster tails. Uh, what is unique that is Bahamian? Do you have any flavor that is yes, different? Yes, the flavor is one of a kind. The lobster itself actually, is, it's, it doesn't have any biters. It doesn't have the biters, like the main lobster. Okay. Yes, that, that, that makes it unique to us. That's our lobster. It doesn't have the biters. Oh, why not? Like, it's just a kind of lobster that is like that? That's right. Oh. Spiny lobster. Spiny, yes. And that is what? This is another form of the bread pudding. Okay. Yes, this bread pudding, we, we did it in a, a mold pan, a mold mat. It's so called good. a mold mat. So you can have the same consistency, the same portion size, and that's that's what we did with this. 
foot of this earth. Get another closer footage. But it's pudding, it looks different. Yes, when you taste it, you will taste the flavors. Okay. You will taste the uniqueness of it. Very nice. So are you comfortable in this kitchen? Yes, once once we have the equipment to work with, we will make it happen. Really? That's excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> As you can see, this is the decor. And for your entree, you will get lionfish again, but you will get it in a mousseline style. So it will be stuffed inside of lobster, sour orange and thyme scented lobster with a, a plantain and big potato puree, fever grass infused vegetables. So you will get a little taste of the islands with the flavors tonight. And for dessert, you get pork also. You know we eat a lot of pork home, we like ribs, we like that. So we, we have it with um, applewood, pecan smoked bacon, and a little jerk style. And in our new um, rum house, that's what we're gonna get. Vanilla ice cream, and macerated fruits and berries. Tropical fruits and berries. So you're in for a little treat. <laughs> Uh, we got we got a late start today, but I guarantee it was worth the wait.
idea for this restaurant and I'm, I'm assuming it's a Bahamian influence and talk a little bit about that. It is. Uh, I spent, um, s can we like redo it too or yeah, no? Yeah, so just yeah, keep talking we'll like normally, you know, edit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I spent um, s two years in the Bahamas, about ten years ago, living on one of my ex-girlfriend's islands. Uh, her family has a place down there and I spent um, two years down there fixing it up and had time to go out diving, fishing and enjoy some of the Caribbean flavors and the beautiful ocean and uh, after spending so much time down there I decided I should bring a piece of that up to uh, New York City. Now we love that it's here in New York City and I'm assuming that, that people can come in here and experience conch fritters and other Bahamian foods? That's right, conch fritters, rum punch, kumbe, sky juice. Um, we actually have lionfish on the menu too which is one of the first restaurants in New York City to, uh, to carry that on the menu. Now for Caribbean Week, I see that you have some Bahamian chefs here um, putting their flavor and their twist on the food. Talk about what that means to have them actually here for this week and the promotion that means for your restaurant. It's a very, it's very important, and we're so happy to have them in town this week. It's just, uh, it's phenomenal how much press we've got in the past few days. People calling the restaurant asking about the Bahamian chefs coming up, and also um, having a chance to, you know, have our cooks cook along that, uh, along them to see like what recipes they have and what kind of twists that we can do on our food to make our food a little bit more true Bahamian. Okay, now my favorite part of the restaurant, believe it or not, is the t-shirts that the servers yeah, are wearing. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. So I picked the t-shirts up in uh, Straw Market in Exuma, actually in Georgetown. So I thought that was a nice touch to have the employees wear uh, authentic uh, I love Bahamas t-shirts that I actually got down in Exuma. Okay. And tell me how the feedback's great. I mean, it's a great laid-back environment. It's something that uh, I think they enjoy. They uh, they're getting a little bit of the Caribbean flavors that they normally wouldn't get in New York City. Uh, I think there's only one or two other Caribbean restaurants, um, and they're more uh, more towards the Jamaican uh, flavors. So everyone everyone so far, we've been up for seven months now. Everyone's been really happy with what we have. It's been great. Good for me. Name again? Okay, just give us your name. Uh, Ryan Chadwick and Norman's Key, 74 Orchard Street, New York, New York. Perfect. Yeah, I should probably like redo the beginning because I sound like I'm retarded. <laughs> no, we got you. On a t-shirt, could we like... What's that? Take a picture of a t-shirt. Do you have one? Yeah. The servers, oh, the are, wearing servers are wearing them. So if you want to okay. get the, uh, the servers. You remember what the okay. first question was? We do have to do the first question again. Oh, just talk about, about the, rest, the idea yeah, the behind restaurant. the restaurant yeah, and yeah. why you decided to name it Norman so I probably Yeah, so the first um, 10 years ago, I lived down in Exuma, south, on the south side of Exuma, on a little island called Hummingbird Key. It's 230 acres. It's about 10 miles from Lost Town Dock. And I spent two entire winters there. And I actually had a chance to uh, live on a very remote island. Uh, I did a lot of bush fixing, which is fixing broken. Uh, boat motors to generators and everything else, but I also learned um, a few Bahamian flavors from the local chefs. They actually cook us dinner every night. We go out, we spearfish our dinner, we 
bring it home and we, and we cook it. So that's kind of what gave me the idea for Norman's Cooking in New York City. Okay, well I actually thought of another question, it's not kind sure. of outside of the restaurant. Talk about your experience in the Bahamas and what left, left the biggest impression on you? The water. I mean, it's, it's all about the water. I mean, there's, what is it, 300 colors, 3,000 shades of blue or something, that's what it is. But every time you go there, you feel just relaxed. It's a, it's a beautiful scenery. And, and the, pe the people and the culture, too. I think that's just, uh, there's something to be said about that. Welcoming, especially to strangers, which is nice. So. Now, you have on the menu some Bahamian uh, dishes. Um, yeah. What other items are you planning on? Uh, you know, we don't have a Bohemian restaurant here in New York City. Right. And um, for you to be serving, you know, punk and... Right. And so like yeah. snapper, grouper, punk. Um, you know, I know lionfish is not an indigenous fish to the Caribbean, but it is now. And I think our kind of our, one of our missions here for the restaurant is to get people to understand the issues with lionfish and it's taking over most of the reefs down there. It's eating all the snapper population, the grouper population, the crawfish, um, the spiny tail lobster. So it's an important major issue in the next few years. There may not be any other fish to eat. So that's one of the one of our missions and goals of this, this restaurant. Uh, do you serve kung fu fritters? We sell kung fritters. We do um, snapper fingers. We actually created a Caribbean taco. So we put oh, a little bit of the yeah. What we do is we put a little bit of um, like grouper finger in a, in a taco. But we do a Caribbean coleslaw on top. So you get a, a little bit of all the flavors in a handheld item. Okay, how about Kong? Would you be set? Would you be um, Absolutely, but I want to make sure that Kong is really fresh. We're selling stuff. We, we only sell you know, the precious fish that we can get. So that's one of our one of our things here. Um, do, you, do you now serve uh, Kong on your menu? Or right now we have. And we're working on getting a local supplier. And as we were talking about earlier, about right. we fish. We actually go down to the Bahamas a lot. We spend a lot of time down there. If I can bring it back fresh to the city and have fresh cracked conch or conch salad. I think that's definitely something we'd like to do. Yeah, because I know that, um, you know, we have Bahamas Culture Day here in New York City. Right. Um, last year was our 15th, 16th year. Okay. And um, we bring in, you know, like 20, 200 pounds of conch. I'm sure that, you know, you'd be able to, to do that kind of... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's something I'll probably look into going forward on this. Yeah, and because, you know, um, we that. want to, um, you know, patronize you as a, you know, Bahamian um, yeah. restaurant. Sure. You no, know, we want to gravitate to, to the fact that you, know, yeah, yeah. you, you have some bohemian flavors, uh, Absolutely. foods up here. We want to uh, definitely uh, encourage that uh, yeah. so that uh, you know, we'll have more and more uh, menus. Absolutely, yeah. And we'll build on it. Our chef is, is not bohemian, so it's hard. He needs to like. He takes a little bit of what he knows, what he, what he knows, and he kind of fuses it with. Uh, we have a lot of Bahamian cookbooks downstairs, okay. uh, old school Bahamian cookbooks. Um, so we incorporate a lot of things. Right, right. But uh, I know so far it's been, it's been great, it's been fun. Yeah, but this, um, I'm from um, Barrel, actually, right. and uh, I have a television show here in New York City called Dead Bahamians. Yeah. Um, and it's seen every Monday at 2 o'clock. I will definitely want to, um, you know, probably do more extensive interviewing you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as to, you know, folks to know that you're very good. Sure, and we're, yeah. we're um, my name is Ryan Chadwick, and this is Norman's Key at 74 Orchard Street, uh, between Broom and Grand, on the Lower East Side. And uh, we're open six days a week. Close yeah. on Monday. We are very close to the, the number uh, two, two of us, and uh, yep. coming on Second Avenue, That's Third right. Avenue. Yeah, right. And the closest, closest train to here is what? Uh, the F and the M or the B and the D. Okay. So, um, okay. so the you're Yeah. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. And how much do you remember the name Norman's Key? So uh, living down in Exuma, um, it's one of the islands, the archipelagos of the Exumas, on the north side. And uh, Norman's Key has a lot of history to it. I don't know if you're aware of Yes. If you uh -huh. are aware of the history, but um, uh -huh. back in the early 80s, there were some issues with Colombians and, and uh, there's a lot of drugs, and there's a lot of travelers that go up there to this day to look at that. Right, it's a beautiful that. key. It is, it's very, very, very nice. But uh, I mean, that's one of the beautiful keys that we have in the house. Absolutely. You know, we have like 700 of them. We do, but, yeah. Uh, no, and uh, I, we have quite a number of those keys. And coming up with a name for a restaurant, I thought that was a, a perfect uh, yeah, name. I, I think the name is really uh, uh, awesome for you to have, uh, you know, export that name. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And, um, you know, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, we want to make this our Bohemian Kitchen. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you so okay, much for coming nice in. We look forward to uh, having you and, and, your, and your watchers come in. Thanks, Thanks everyone.
certainly a pleasure. Correct, yes. of the tourism act in the Bahamas. We have been actively uh, pursuing our guests to come and vacation in the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. And we started off Caribbean Week this year on Sunday with our Jubilee celebration at the Mount, uh, sorry, the Mother Ahem Zion Church in Harlem. Um, as I mentioned, the Tourism Act is 50 years and we've had Jubilee celebrations throughout the Caribbean and uh, throughout our islands in the Bahamas, Bahamas uh, starting on January 7th, which is the actual anniversary of the Act being signed and brought into, into being. So we started with the Tourism Act uh, Jubilee at Mount, sorry, <laughs> at Mother, at Mother AME Zion. And our minister, our pastor there, is the sister of Albert Sears. Her name is Reverend Pochette, Reverend Sears Pochette. So she brought the message. And we were also lucky to be blessed with Shabbat, our gospel group from the Bahamas. They have performed at the service as well. Um, our permanent secretary, Harrison Thompson, was there, and he brought the proclamation from our minister, our prime minister. And we also had our very new director general, uh, Joy Jibaru. I <laughs> keep doing this. <laughs> Joy Jibaru, our brand new director general, was there and she also brought remarks on behalf of the Minister of Tourism. Now, what is the meaning of uh, the 50th Jubilee celebration? Uh, you mentioned that um, it's 50 years of bringing the culture. It's 50 years of us actually actively pursuing tourism in the Bahamas. So we had visitors coming in and out of our country for, for holistic reasons for many, many years. And we realized the benefit in actually marketing the Bahamas to other countries for more than just a holistic visit, more like a relaxation, a getaway, a close getaway for our family and friends in Florida and our partners throughout the rest of North America. And so we actually made an act in Parliament, brought an act in Parliament to pursue tourism throughout the world, to get more visitors to see our beautiful country and to visit our 700 islands, and not just to come and vacation, but also to invest. Uh, yeah, in addition to investing, you know, what, what emphasis is going to be placed on the next well, the next 50 years would definitely be to enhance the culture and the experience that we have in the Bahamas. We've realized uh, that a lot of our visitors know a lot about Nassau, the island of New Providence, but they're not so well versed on the other 699 islands in our diaspora. So we'd love to uh, make sure that those other islands get a little bit more play, a little bit more publicity. Uh, we've got more direct airlift now coming out of Florida. We've got direct airlift coming into Grand Bahama from eight major gateways in the United States, including right here out of Newark, New Jersey. Um, we also have good partnerships with JetBlue that does code sharing with several of our smaller islands. And we've got direct airlift from Florida, as I mentioned, through West Palm Beach, Orlando, Miami, and Fort Lauderdale into several islands. Um, to encourage more visitors to come, we've upgraded several of our airports. Uh, our, the airport in Abaco got a huge uh, facelift. Airport got expanded. The runway was redone. And so that also helps in the, the visitor turnaround and turnover. Uh, makes it easier for them to get here on larger planes so that we have a bigger spread of visitors coming into that destination. We've upgraded hotels in uh, some of the other islands as well. Bimini now does a ferry service out of Miami, directly into Bimini, directly into the Bimini Bay Resort. And they've also um, partnered with World Resorts, Resorts World, sorry, which is their flagship and their management company. And they are doing casino as well as hotel, and they tout their special rooms as uh, tree houses. So that's a very unique feature. We've got expansion going on in San Salvador. The tree houses are in Bimini at the Bimini Bay Resort, or sorry, at, at Resorts World Bimini as it's now called. <laughs> um, we also have huge expansion in San Salvador with Club Med, and they will be back on stream as of 2016, I believe it is, um, expanding their property to include more bungalows and more activities and amenities, not just for couples, but for families as well, and business travel. So throughout the Bahamas, we're doing a lot of development and, and making it a little bit more accessible for all of our visitors so that they're not only first-time visitors, but repeat visitors. Um, our cruise numbers continue to increase. We have cruises that go directly into Nassau and into Grand Bahama. And several of the major cruise companies also own private islands in 
the Bahamas. So when they do a Bahamas trip, they might stop into one of their private islands like Castaway Key, which is owned by Disney, or even uh, Princess Isle. Um, in Nassau, a huge development is Bahamar which comes on stream at the end of this year. And they've got just over 2,500 new rooms in four major towers, one being the Mondrian, the Rosewood, the Grand Hyatt, and then the Bahamar Casino Tower. And they've also redone the golf course in the Cable Beach Strip, which is now a Greg Norman uh, designed golf course. And they will also have huge convention space and the largest casino in the Caribbean. So with our Golden Jubilee, we're really moving forward to expand tourism in all of our islands, not just in Nassau or not just in Grand Bahama. And speaking of Grand Bahama, we've got Memories um, Resort, which is an all-inclusive, a four and a half star, which is on the Lucayan Strip next to Port Lucaya. So that just opened in March. And they also tout a uh, golf course and beautiful beach activities in their all-inclusive property, even though it's there, with a casino attached, uh, we encourage our visitors to get off property and see the rest of the island because our country is very small and very accessible and the beauty of our islands is more to interact with the people than anything else. Now you talk about uh, uh, expanding, exposing the culture. Yes. Um, which areas are you focusing on? Are you focusing on all of the areas or just the parts? Well, where our culture spans primarily from Junkanoo is the one export that everyone knows about. So we're going to delve deeper into our John Canoe festivities and not just host our usual Boxing Day and New Year's Day activities. We're also doing Summer John Canoe or Gombe Festival. And we're also going to expand a little bit further and include our visitors in the experience in more of a carnival-based John Canoe Festival that will happen in the summertime. I believe that comes on stream next year. Um, again, the culture is not just the John Canoe Festival, but it's the music and it's the food. And with Caribbean Week, every time we participate, we make sure we bring our chefs in because the culinary experience is one that is without without explanation. It's something that our visitors can readily be exposed to as soon as they leave property or even at some of the Bahamian restaurants on property. And it's something that they can take back away with them when they go home. Now, I know you have a lot of Bahamian artists you know, in the house. Yes. Um, are you, are you, is there any emphasis on exposing Bahamian artists? Definitely, with many of the activities that tourism does abroad, we try to bring one of our entertainers with us. So at Caribbean Week this year, we have Puzzle, and he performed at our travel agents event, and I believe he performed again at the Romance Pavilion last night, and he might be performing again today as we speak. Um, we do our best to expose them with us on our endeavors, but we also encourage them to branch out on their own. I know one of our artists, or groups, Visage, uh, participates in Trinidad's Carnival, and they do that quite regularly. And every so often, we participate in Caribbean um, Caravana in, Trin in Toronto, sorry, where we bring a Junkanoo group up to Toronto, and they actually play mass with a Trinidad band and they interact one-to-one -one so that our Bahamian culture is exposed over there along with the, the Caribbean culture of other countries. Now, let me ask you uh, another question. We do not have a tourist office here in the Not yet. But uh, are there any plans to open the back of an office here in the Certainly. We are looking and actively looking at an office space right now so that we can reopen the office in New York because we realize that this market is huge and it is very important to a continued growth and expansion of the awareness of the Bahamas in the Northeastern Corridor of the United States. So we are looking to open an office very soon. Right, now you mentioned romancing. Uh, can you explain what the romancing is uh, all about? Sure. Well, romantic travel has always been well known in the Bahamas, not just for destination weddings, but also for honeymoons. And at present, we have a 16 island wedding challenge going on where 16 couples buy for an opportunity to have an all expense paid wedding on one of 16 islands in the Bahamas on January 16th at 1600 hours. So the clock is ticking down. I think there are only a few more days to uh, submit their applications. So any couples interested in getting married in the near future, they can submit on Bahamas.com, fill out their forms, send in their video, let us know which island they'd love to get married on and why we should choose them. And that is the destination wedding and honeymoon of a lifetime. So which islands um, can they those 16 islands include Nassau, Paradise Island, Acklands and Crooked Island, Bimini, uh, Grand Bahama, of course, Abacos, Exuma. We've got, I'm missing, I'm missing eight. <laughs> 
San Salvador is one of them, uh, Inagua, Long Island, Cat Island, Eleuthera, Harbor Island. I think I might have covered them all <laughs> somewhere in that vicinity, but all of the major ones, yes. Meguan, I believe, is another one. But the 16 Island Wedding Challenge is available, uh, the information is available on our website, bahamas.com. Are there any special uh, offers going on at this moment? Yes, aside from the wedding challenge, we have a promotion going on in the market, a $250 instant savings promotion, whereby our visitors can book a hotel and airfare at the same time. If they're staying more than three nights in Grand Bahama, they get an instant savings of $250 per room booked, a maximum of two rooms. And if they're staying in Grand, uh, Nassau sorry, and the other family islands, it's a minimum of four night stays. But airfare and hotel have to be booked at the same time. And it can be booked with any of the major airlines as well as the major websites. So that's not I believe that one, there's one that just ended on May 27th and another one rolls in about in two weeks time, a summer promotion. They have about a three week window to book, a five week window to book, sorry, and they can travel up until December. So the, the information for that is also on our website on Bahamas.com. Correct. Okay, um, another question on shelters before we... Come and visit. We're so close, especially in the northeastern corridor. We're only a two and a half hour flight away. Our, our language is English and our people are so warm and friendly and personable. The, the biggest celebrities you'll ever meet are the Bahamans that you meet throughout your visit. Uh, we'd love to have you here. We'd love to see you visit us again if you've been before and haven't been for a while. And if it's a first trip, we'd love you to island hop. Stop off in Nassau, maybe take a fast ferry to Harbor Island to walk along the pink sand beaches. Uh, if you're a little bit more adventurous, take a powerboat to Exuma where you can swim with the pigs. Yes, we have swimming pigs in Exuma. And if you're a little bit more of a nature lover, um, you can come over to Grand Bahama and do a kayak through the mangroves or even a bicycle tour. Uh, they also have uh, uh, the shop, uh, contemporary, oh, Most of our, yes, well, most of our islands have phenomenal diving, scuba and snorkeling. Uh, fantastic reef diving. We've got one of the largest barrier reefs off the coast of Andros. For fishermen, it's a fisher's paradise, uh, deep sea fishing and reef fishing. Uh, we also have fantastic um, blue holes that have been mapped out and, just, and, and swam along so that if you're a very experienced diver, you can dive a blue hole. Dean's Blue Hole in Long Island is the deepest blue hole that National Geographic has ever measured and they do tons of free dive uh, competitions there, so that's another experience. And then for those that want something a little bit more laid back, uh, you can do the, as I mentioned, the ferry ride between the islands. Uh, Abaco is fantastic for the ferry system to their smaller keys as well. And you can get to see a little bit of what the, dia the, the archipelago is like from island to island. They're very different and very unique. So the shark dives, okay. most of the major dive operations have shark dives and um, dolphin experiences as well where you can actually go out into the open oceans with the dolphins. The shark dives in Nassau are done through some of the dive outfits and even with the fast ferry, um, sorry, the powerboat into Exuma, they stop off at a private key and they do a shark feed and also a stingray feed. So uh, if you're a little bit more adventurous and you're interested in the shark dive, then most of the major dive outfits per per perform those activities. And you can see their information on their websites or starting with Bahamas.com, we have a listing of most of our top operators there. I mentioned that you're bringing back uh, Gombe Summer. Gombe Summer, yes. Is it starting this year or when is it starting? It started last year, I believe, was the first one. And again, summertime, all of our junk new activities, all of the food, our entertainers, Bahamian entertainers, and even a taste of how Junk New came about, a little his story. We do um, stories on the porch, and taste of our bush tea, and all of our other flavors and amenities. Crazy stories on the porch. Is that folk, folk stories? Folk stories, yes. Folk yes. Stories. yes. Some of the indigenous stories and, and folklore, some of our history, our, our Bahamian version of Bigfoot is the Chick Charney, and other little um, family, family tales. Thank you, Brad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, this is Deb Bahamians. Uh, see you every Monday here in New York City uh, at 2 o'clock. And in Nassau, you can see us on the web. Fantastic. www.hamnn.org. Click on channel 1. Great. Okay, you can also uh, see this show on uh, YouTube. So, uh, Check us out. YouTube, Dem Bahamians, and Bahamas all in one go. Dem Bahamians TV Space Barrel. Excellent. Okay.
Okay, and uh, the website for the uh, 16... 16 Island Wedding Challenge and all things Bahamian is Bahamas.com. And if you want a hashtag, it's better in the Bahamas, we'll, we'll follow you. Okay, beautiful. All the best. Thank you.
Some kind of peace of mind. 